Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and I just want to do a puzzle review. I haven't gotten to do too many jigsaw puzzles in a while, but man, did we go on a spree at school during the last two weeks of of school. So during review week and during finals week, uh, I just put out some puzzles for my students who were done reviewing or who had already finished their exam early. And man, did we go to town? I didn't even, I think I'm probably going to be the sponsor of a puzzle club next year because everybody had so much fun doing these puzzles. So I'm going to tell you what puzzles we did, uh, including one that I did myself, but the others were done with help from my students, which was delightful. And I'll let you know what we liked and didn't like. So the first puzzle we did, I started with a simple one because I didn't really know how my students would respond to puzzles. So I picked one that I thought would be simple. So I brought in Vintage Pencils by Gallison. So this is literally just a puzzle of old school pencils with like weird <laughs> little company names and catchphrases on them. And it was my first jigsaw puzzle that had gold foil on it, which was really, really cool. So because the pencils are different in color and you're looking for text, this puzzle was not too tough to complete, but my students really enjoyed it and it was a satisfying puzzle. Uh, Gallison puzzles are also very high quality, so the piece fit was really good, the quality of the pieces was excellent, and it was just overall a pleasant, simple experience. So if you want a fairly chill puzzle that looks like this puzzle, uh, then by all means go for it, it was good. It was not, however, my students' favorite. Their favorite was the second and more difficult puzzle that I brought in. So they enjoyed all the puzzles, but I would say that the second one we did was the biggest hit. And this most popular puzzle was an image of, I don't know how to pronounce the name, Alphonse Mucha's The Four Seasons. And it was published by Eurographics. So this is a really gorgeous, I guess kind of art deco depiction of the four seasons with really cool ornate borders and just very gorgeous imagery. It was very hard to do, especially the top and bottom with the repeating patterns. But my students were obsessed with this puzzle. Um, my classes raced to see who would finish it first. People were obsessive about finding like that one missing piece to complete their part of the puzzle. Uh, people would high five when they found pieces. It just turned into this really intense communal experience. So the Gallison puzzle was good, but man, this Hero Graphics puzzle just brought out the best in everybody. And we had a great time. The end result was gorgeous. And I'm so, so glad that I, I did that puzzle. Uh, full disclosure, my mother, who's far more stylish than I, sent me that puzzle. And I'm so glad that I brought it to school to share it with my students because we loved it. Loved it. After that, we did a puzzle that I thought my students would really love and they did really like it but it actually was not as big a hit as the Four Seasons, go figure. And it was called The Artist Desk. And it is part of like the Pixar series from Ravensburger. So it's basically an artist desk with images of Nemo and the monsters from Monsters Inc. and a bunch of turtles and you know, some Toy Story characters. And it was super cute. My students and I enjoyed it. We saw characters that we recognized. It was satisfying. However, there were two issues. One is that there was one piece missing. And I actually don't think we lost it because we did five puzzles between the start of review week and the end of the school year and only one piece went missing. I'm willing to give my students the benefit of the doubt on that. So one piece was missing, which was not satisfying. And the other thing that was interesting about this particular puzzle is that the image on the box was much brighter and had better color contrast than the actual puzzle. So because of the shadow of the desk lamp, the outer edges of the puzzle are super gray. And I mean, it's totally possible to complete the puzzle. It just wasn't as pretty on the edges as we thought it was going to be. And it didn't really look like the reference image, which was something that multiple class periods noted and that was not like popular with the kids. It didn't really matter in terms of completion of the end. It looked great on the table, but note that if that's something that you care about. The piece fit was really nice. Ravensburger's soft click technology was quite lovely. Uh, but this puzzle also was notable for lots of puzzle dust. It had the most dust of any of the puzzles that we completed. Then the next one that we completed was actually my personal favorite of the last two weeks of school. It was called Shipside Celebration. It's by Antov Lamayev and it is published by Art and Fable. I love their velvet touch pieces and the matte finish on the pieces that has just really great, gorgeous color saturation. And the kids also really did like this puzzle. It was a 750 piece puzzle. All the rest were a thousand pieces, but the complexity of the image made the puzzle really hard. And we had a tough time doing the water and then like some of the parts of the ship that had really similar patterns, but we loved it. We thought that it was gonna take forever to do this puzzle. The kids were like, this is really hard. It's gonna take forever. But we were so into it that really in the end it did not. The end result was just stunning. It looked great. 
all of the kids had to do a puzzle rub on the Velvet Touch pieces. It was very popular. And I would say that it was probably their second favorite after the Four Seasons, but it was my absolute favorite. I really, really liked this puzzle a lot. My only complaint about the puzzle was that there were some pieces where the image was kind of lifting off of the cardboard a bit and it came out of the box that way. It was not something that happened from rough handling with my students. So that bothered me a little bit, but it was only a couple pieces. And again, the end result, ah, chef's kiss. Then I finished a puzzle by myself. Uh, it had been kind of sitting in my puzzle keeper for a while, but the kids inspired me, so I finished it. It's called Plenty of Yarn. It was by Cobble Hill. And it was just a really simple little yarn puzzle uh, with balls of yarn that were different colors, but it actually had some pretty challenging parts where patterns were similar across different balls of yarn or where I was trying to recognize texture from different parts of the image and figure out which textures match because the shade and color might be similar, but the texture wasn't. It wasn't anything particularly special, but it was a very enjoyable puzzle. And I will say that I thought the pieces were very high quality. They were very nice and it just felt really satisfying to put the puzzle together and the end result was good. So I'll definitely do another Cobble Hill puzzle. It was a good quality puzzle and I'll just be on the lookout for more images that I'm interested in. And then our last puzzle of the year, I don't think it was anybody's favorite, although we did enjoy it. And it was my first Buffalo puzzle. And this one was called Peace Like a River. It was by Kim Norleen, but it was like a cabin image with like a bunch of like little hidden animals. And we enjoyed finding like the dog and the turtle and a couple birds and all kinds of stuff. And the puzzle was pretty challenging because it had a lot of foliage and then like a, the reflection of the cabin in the water that we had to put together. But that part was actually pretty fun. We did enjoy it. It just wasn't the most satisfying of the puzzles. I would say the part that was the most frustrating about it was that those pieces were shiny. You know, I prefer the matte of an Art and Fable puzzle, but you know, even puzzle pieces with a bit of shine weren't as shiny as this one was. I had to keep changing the angle that I was looking at things at to try to like just see the pieces. Of course, the classroom has like nasty fluorescent overhead lighting, so that did not help. But this one was the shiniest and it just, there were parts of the puzzle where there were a lot of false joins, like something about the grid and some of the repeating patterns and colors on the pieces made it really common for people to misjoin pieces and then we'd find issues later. So, I mean, it wasn't a bad puzzle. We had a good time doing it, but there were like little issues with it that made it less satisfying to complete than the others. So that was the end of my school year. That was a lot of puzzles. We had a great time. Uh, I absolutely plan to do more puzzles with my students when we have downtime for finals week or as a club next year because it just brought so much joy and that that made my heart happy so if you need to relax you need to take a breather but you want to do something i really can't recommend jigsaw puzzles enough everybody can do them and if you're persistent everybody can finish them so i uh i highly recommend getting yourself a little puzzle time sometimes because it will do a lot for you unless of course you are me and your students hate you and they give you this as a, as an end of the year gift. Just kidding. I actually can't wait to complete it. Uh, I'll probably put it out and let all of us scratch our heads over it all year. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Or if you're feeling exceptionally generous, I've just started a Patreon and your support would mean a lot to me. But no matter what you do, thank you so much for watching and happy gaming.